Hi everyone, I'm John Wright, the Education Director at Meteorite Workshops. Welcome back. This is the second part of the Lens Correction Filter tutorial. In the first video, we covered perspective adjustments usually found in architectural photography. In this part, we're going to discuss barrel distortion, chromatic aberration, and vignetting. Lenses cause these problems with our images, regardless of the quality of the lens. The lens correction filter is Photoshop's answer to solving these problems. Remember this is a video. You can stop and replay anytime if I'm getting ahead of you. So let's get started. Barrel distortion or curvature of the lens is something I don't run into too often. It's in every photograph that we take, but it doesn't become very obvious until you have some uh, parallel lines or a, a grid texture to what you're photographing. And uh, I run into that. I've run into that every now and then when I've been doing architectural photography. And this piece is an example of that I photographed a lot of artwork at the Indianapolis airport. Um, they had a lot of stained glass window like this, and uh, you can see the setting of this window. It's in a um, a window wall, if you will. It's set into the uh, actual frame of the window. Here is the original as I took it, and it's not so obvious as you look at it this magnification, but if we zoom in a little bit, you're going to see that there is indeed some curvature in these um, uh, in the in the frame itself that's being caused by the lens. I'm just going to draw a line across here using a ruler tool just so you can see that. I'm just going to draw a line across right across the bottom there. That line should uh, track all the way across the frame here but it's not as you notice it gets to the center here. It's The uh, frame is kind of bending away from the line and that's uh, because of the distortion caused by the lens. So the way we fix that is um, we're going to go into filter, distort, lens correction, and use the uh, remove distortion setting up here. That will allow us to eliminate that curvature. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit into this area here so that when we actually make this correction, you should be able to see it a little bit right here. If I adjust it uh, to the positive negative side, you can see that gets even more exaggerated. Uh, as I go to one extreme, you can see it's going quite a bit. But what I found was to make an adjustment of about a positive two with this lens gets rid of most of that distortion. I'm going to go up to about a two. I'm just going to type in 2 and that looks pretty good so I'm going to click um, OK and you can see when we come back to the image that it's been kind of pushed in a little bit at the top at the bottom left and right to adjust to that little bit of distortion we have and let's go in and uh, take a look at our ruler now and we can see that it, let me activate that here, let's run that ruler across there now, we can see that the frame is now straight and uh, parallel to that line. Now I'd like to show you an example of uh, chromatic aberration. We're going to take a look at this photograph of an uh, airport hangar building and Chromatic aberration occurs uh, where there's kind of a contrasty area next to a um, darker area. And as I zoom in on this, you can see an example of that where this pillar is. There's a slight uh, kind of pinkish reddish uh, tone here where the gray, blue gray of the sky meets the uh, white highlight area caused by the sun on this pillar. So we're going to do a, a correction of that using the chromatic aberration uh, adjustment in the uh, lens correction filter. So we'll go to lens correction. I'm going to zoom in on that area a little closer. You can see it there. 
and we have kind of what the red cyan fringe here and here with a chromatic aberration I'm going to make an adjustment just slipping that a little bit if I go one way you can see it get really exaggerated I'm going to slip it back down into the positive area about a positive five and I see that more or less disappear it's kind of a balancing act okay I'm gonna click OK and there it is you can see it's mostly gone it's not a perfect solution and really Photoshop only does a, a moderately okay job with mild cases of chromatic aberration if I pan over here to the flagpole we've got tons of chromatic aberration right here on the flagpole um, which isn't so obvious from a distance but when you get in close to this flagpole you can see red and cyan chromatic aberration on the flagpole <clears throat> which frankly if you really if it does concern you you're just gonna have to manually go in and change those um, pixels um, by selecting them and uh, adjusting the color of them the last thing I want to talk to you about is vignetting uh, which is kind of a natural phenomena that occurs um, in um, due to the lenses uh, here's a photograph that I took of just a, um, a white board I took the exposure right off the white so it turned it into kind of a neutral gray like this but hopefully you can see in the corners here it's darker in the corners than it is in the center and this happens on all the photographs you take if I uh, click on um, the uh, information panel over here and I take my cursor over these uh, corners you can see the red green blue values uh, are 115, 116, 111 right in the you know 110 to 120 mark if I bring it over in the center here I'm up to 150 so I've got about a 35 point variation in the tonality between the center and the outside of the image now a lot of portrait photographers like that they like it to kind of get a little darker up in the corners and in a lot of your photographs you may not even notice this but it is if it is a concern there's a way to make an adjustment in the lens correction filter so I'm going to show you how to do that so we're going to go to filter to sort lens correction and if you see um, vignette right here you can adjust the amount of the vignetting uh, by either going up or down here make the outside darker or lighter as we're doing here and that's a little closer to the way it should be so I've gone up about 30 points there uh, in the corner I can also control the the size of the um, bright uh, brighter to darker area with this here so your midpoint adjustment will affect that as well so I'm going to do about a plus 50 on that that looks pretty good I'm going to click OK and now that looks a little bit better than what we had before let's go to our information here run the cursor over we got 150 on the outside we got 150 on the inside so that's pretty even a little brighter over here it's pretty even as far as the distribution of the exposure here so um, something to keep an eye out for it's kind of like um, barrel distortion uh, you're gonna have it in all your pictures but it it, you, it may or may not uh, affect the image enough for you to need to make this adjustment thanks again for watching my online tutorials are a great way to learn However, there's a lot of things that I simply don't have time to share with you online. If you want to learn more and enjoy a more hands-on learning experience, check out the classes we offer here at Meteorite Workshops. It's a great way to learn. At Meteorite, we support our students long enough the class is over. Check it out.